to part one of the atmosphere stuff. Technically it's part two, you need to know all the different levels of the atmosphere, um, but really you just need to know the bottom one. Uh, that is where most of the atmosphere stuff that we're going to look at happens. So yeah, most of the things we look at are in the troposphere, which is the lowest level of our atmosphere, and that is where 75% of the mass of our atmosphere is. Uh, in here we have all of our weather um, and lots of the things that we understand and a lot of these cloud movements and air movements we are going to talk about happen in this low level, the troposphere level. But the first big thing we've got to look at is something called the global heat budget. You may have come across this in the climate change topic, but it's going to be a lot more detailed in the atmosphere topic that we're going to look at now. So what is the global heat budget? The global heat budget is that the sun gives out 100% energy, but only around 51% of that actually reaches the land. So we're going to look at where that other 49% goes and why it doesn't reach the surface of our planet. So let's start with our sun in the sky. Sun in the sky You know how I feel Feel. Let's make him a happy son. Give him a wee smiley face. Okay, okay, so our sun is in the sky giving off massive amounts of energy that come down towards the earth. So, 100% of energy here coming down. But you will notice that before it even reaches the troposphere, when it reaches some of the high levels at the mesosphere, it will reflect and bounce off. So we have around about 6% that bounces off automatically from this level. So uh, let's put in 6% up here that just bounces back off and straight back into space. Um, remember, we've got 100% uh, in here that is coming down, um, but we're already down to 94% left. Um, let's go back. Our sun travels a wee bit more down, or our solar light comes a bit more down, and then there's our big one that hits it away. And this bounces and deflects off of these white fluffy things here. No, they're not sheep. They are clouds. Now, clouds reflect around about 20% of the light that comes to our planet. Now that the main reason for this is something to do with the fact that the clouds are white and white reflects a lot more light than it absorbs. We talk more about this in the next section um, in terms of the variations of insulation across the planet but for now, all you need to know that the clouds are white and because of something called the albedo effect, they reflect around about 20% of energy back into space. So it travels a bit further south. And we're not just saying that things are reflected by, there is a lot of things in our atmosphere that are going to do some absorption. That actually, a lot of the particles in our atmosphere are going to absorb the heat and light that comes in. Now we're talking things like water vapour, we're talking things like carbon dioxide, we're talking things like other things. We're talking like our greenhouse gases, all these things that cause climate change, all these things that cause a global warming effect, they absorb heat. And these things are absorbing around about 16%. Do you know what? I feel like blue on blue is not really going to work. Let's go with something a bit more jazzy for the sky. Let's go with 16%. Um, is absorbed by our atmosphere. We're going to recap all these at the end and just put the kind of labels in properly, but this is to go through as we're talking just now. Uh, so we are down to some quick maths. 6% in the atmosphere takes down to 94. 20% reflected by the clouds takes us down to 74. 16% absorbed in the atmosphere takes us down to 58%. We'll get 7% more. Ish. Continues on. 
and down. And some of these big clouds also do some absorption. Uh, they also contain water vapor, they contain heat, and they are taking in around about 3% of our insulation, our light, our heat energy that is coming from the sun. Eventually, Yay! the sun is made to the ground. Um, however, uh, the sun, the ground also has quite reflective places, especially places that are very white, very silver, very um, light coloured, like the poles. Hint, hint for next topic. And it also reflects some heat um, back up into the sky. And this is our remainder. This is our 4% that is going back up into the sky. So do we have it now? Do we have 49%? Let's do a quick check. So 6% um, reflected by the atmosphere, 20% reflected by clouds, and 4% reflected by the surface of the Earth gives us 30%. Hmm, not too bad so far. Then we've got 16% that is absorbed by the atmosphere, and 3% absorbed by clouds gives us our 49%. So only 51% is being absorbed by the surface of our planet. And then eventually stays there for a while that some of it is radiated back out. Some of it is radiated directly into space. Some of it is picked more, uh, is reflected back into the atmosphere where it's picked up. We're going to go with a nice rainbow pen for what happens on the other side. Pay attention, this is going to be speeded up and we will look over it really quickly. 23% eliminated back out by latent heat. We have 21% by uh, long emissions. We have 26% from clouds. We have Okay, so that is us. We have our global heat budget diagram done in. Uh, I'm going to put a really nice one in at the end for you to actually see. Um, but that explains it all. But when we're doing a diagram, let's go through it again. Let's use a lovely color. Let's go with a nice like mm, red. Okay, so we want to label some of these up and you will see, let's go out again and you'll see the labels at the side there. So realistically, we've got 100% of our heat coming in. That's number one, 100% of our heat energy comes from the sun. Number two is 6% of our heat energy is reflected by things in the atmosphere, like uh, dust particles, gas particles, and um, things like that will reflect it back. Then we have number three, 20% is reflected by the white fluffiness of those clouds to get it back into the atmosphere. Uh, number four is our atmosphere, such as our greenhouse gases, absorbs around about 16%. And then 3% is absorbed by the clouds. So we're down to mostly the last wee thing we've got is this number six that 4% on average is reflected by the land and is reflected back into space. Which leaves us with number seven, that only 51% of our heat actually reaches the surface of the earth. After that, we have all this other side. You don't really need to know this for an answer and higher, but we'll just put some of it in anyway. That 23% is latent heat, so that's number eight. Uh, that 21%, and that's just like the natural reflection or the natural giving off of heat from the surface of the earth. 21% is not number eight. 21% is by the emissions of long wave radiation back towards space. Some of them will be intercepted by clouds uh, and absorbed themselves, but eventually 26% is then given off by the clouds themselves. 38% is emissions from the atmosphere. These are the things that are trapped by water vapor and the greenhouse gases that they then give off around about 38%. So that's the up number 11. 
And number 12 is 7% is given off by something called sensible heat, which is when heat is given off by the change in thermodynamic properties. But we really need to know about the outgoing things. When you're asked a question at higher or in environmental science, then you're really going to be expected to discuss mostly that. Um, that incoming and how the Earth's amount of energy coming from our sun is deflected and absorbed and changed before so that we only get 51% absorbed into our planet. Okay. I promise a much clearer diagram. That is what you'll get. So you can obviously use, um, you know, as we should do in this, you should be copying along with the diagram I've drawn um, and something and it should end up looking something like that. So let's bring that down here and I will leave you with this as the end point. So there we go, let's um, clear that from our page and that is what you should end up with there. That is the Earth's energy budget. Um, join us for the next part where we are going to be looking at how this isn't so specific all around the planet and there actually are variations in our solar insulation between the equators and the poles. But we'll see you in that next part. Bye.